Now, let me tell you the actions of the sympathetic nervous system on the glands. Now, if you take the actions of the sympathetic nervous system on the glands, remember the secretions of the salivary glands, they become thick, right? The secretions of the salivary glands, they become thick if the sympathetic nervous system is acting on the salivary glands. So, one important point is the secretions of salivary glands they become thick right so that is one important point next the other thing is the effect on the sweat glands that is the sweat secretion now if you take the sweat secretion sweating is stimulated by sympathetic cholinergic receptors so a point what you have to remember is the postganglionic sympathetic fibers the neurotransmitter is epinephrine and as well as norepinephrine i'll repeat again the postganglionic sympathetic neurotransmitter is epinephrine and as well as norepinephrine whereas you take the postganglionic sympathetic nervous system supplying to the sweat glands there the sympathetic nerve terminals will produce the acetylcholine right let me clear you the point what you should remember is at all the points at all the postganglionic sympathetic nerve terminals the neurotransmitter is epinephrine and norepinephrine whereas at the postganglionic sympathetic nerve endings which is ending over the sweat glands there the sympathetic nervous system will produce acetylcholine so that is the reason why you remember a point here sympathetic cholinergic receptors right what are the receptors which are present within the sweat glands within the sweat glands remember we have muscarinic receptors and that particular muscarinic receptors is m3 receptors right that particular muscarinic receptors are m3 receptors now this particular m3 receptors are stimulated right this particular m3 receptors are stimulated by by sympathetic right they are st stimulated by sympathetic cholinergic receptors right sympathetic cholinergic receptors so what you have to remember is when the sympathetic cholinergic receptors are stimulated which is nothing but m3 receptors there will be increase in the sweating right there will be increase in the sweating so this is a very very important point what you should remember so if you see the actions on the gland the secretions of the salivary glands they become very much thick but you take the actions on the sweat glands the sweating is stimulated by sympathetic cholinergic receptors that is m3 receptors if that m3 receptors are stimulated there will be increase in the sweating okay next next let me discuss the metabolic effects right let me discuss the metabolic effects metabolic effects of the actions of sympathetic nervous system now so if you take the metabolic effects first you see on the fat metabolism and next later on i'll discuss on the carbohydrate metabolism now you take on the adipose tissue remember in the adipose tissue the receptors what we have is the beta 3 receptors right in the adipose tissue the receptors what we have is the beta 3 receptors now when this particular beta 3 receptors are stimulated they will cause the breakdown of triglycerides to free fatty acids okay so remember a point here whenever so sympathetic nervous system will stimulate the beta 3 receptors once the sympathetic nervous system will stimulate the beta 3 receptors that will cause right that will cause the breakdown of triglycerides right and this particular triglycerides 
are broken down to free fatty acids. Right, these particular triglycerides are broken down to free fatty acids. So this is the effect of the sympathetic nervous system on the adipose tissue. Okay, so stimulation of the beta 3 receptor causes the breakdown of the triglycerides to the free fatty acids. That is the effect of the sympathetic nervous system on the fat metabolism. Now, now let me tell you the effect of the sympathetic nervous system on the carbohydrate metabolism. So a point what you should remember is the sympathetic nervous system what it will do to the carbohydrates is by to the to this particular CHO stands for carbohydrates. So this particular carbohydrate metabolism is enhanced and thereby there will be increase in the glucose production. Right thereby there will be increase in the glucose production. Now now let me tell you how this particular glucose production is increased by the action of the sympathetic nervous system. Now so increase in the glucose which is called as hyperglycemia. Right which is called as hyperglycemia. Now so you take this particular hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia is caused by two mechanisms. So first of all one particular mechanism is number one it will cause what is called as glycogenolysis right the sympathetic nervous system what they do is first initially they will stimulate the beta 2 receptors once this particular beta 2 receptors are stimulated there are two mechanisms by which the glucose production increases number one glycogenolysis Right, number one by glycogenolysis. Glycogenolysis is what glycogen is broken down to glucose. That is what is called as glycogenolysis. Next, the other mechanism how there will be hyperglycemia is by gluconeogenesis. Right, by gluconeogenesis. Now, now let me discuss how by gluconeogenesis there will be hyperglycemia. So a point what you should remember what is gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis is formation of the glucose right formation of the glucose from non carbohydrate moiety is called gluconeogenesis I'll repeat again formation of the glucose from non carbohydrate moiety is called as the gluconeogenesis right so that is by your beta 2 receptor stimulation next now let me tell you the effect of the sympathetic nervous system on the potassium right let me tell you the effect of the sympathetic nervous system on the potassium what will happen is initially the sympathetic nervous system will cause the efflux of the potassium from the liver right initially the sympathetic nervous system will cause efflux of the potassium from the liver so initially there will be hyperkalemia so what you have to remember is sympathetic nervous system initially they will have hyperkalemia initially they have hyperkalemia right how do they have this particular hyperkalemia the sympathetic nervous system will cause the efflux of the potassium from the liver right sympathetic nervous system will cause efflux of the potassium from the liver and thereby the individual will have hyperkalemia now Followed by this particular hyperkalemia, there will be hypokalemia. Right? Followed by hyperkalemia, the individual will have hypokalemia. Now, how do you think there will be hypokalemia? Right? How do you think there will be hypokalemia? So, this particular hypokalemia is due to uptake of potassium by the skeletal muscle. Right? So, this is due to uptake of potassium by skeletal muscle okay so in this way they will have the hypokalemia so whatever the potassium has been effluxed from the liver will be taken up by the skeletal muscle and thereby there will be hypokalemia so this is a very important point what you should remember all right next 
Next, the another important point is, like I've said you the hyperglycemia. Now, how do you think that there is hyperglycemia? Sympathetic nervous system will cause stimulation of the beta 2 receptors and thereby there will be increase in glycogenolysis and as well as gluconeogenesis and thereby there is hyperglycemia. Next, there is another mechanism how this sympathetic nervous system will cause hyperglycemia that is by alpha 2 stimulation. Now, let me tell you what is that. Now, if this alpha 2 receptors are stimulated, right, alpha 2 receptors are stimulated, that will also result in hyperglycemia, right, that will also result in hyperglycemia. Now, let me tell you how this particular alpha 2 receptor stimulation will cause hyperglycemia. A point that you have to remember here is, once this alpha 2 receptors are stimulated, right, once this alpha 2 receptors are stimulated, they will cause reduction of the release of insulin from the beta cells, right? So, this alpha 2 receptors, they will, stimulation will cause reduction of, release of insulin from beta cells. Okay, so this is a very important point what you should remember. Beta 2 receptor stimulation will cause glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. The alpha 2 receptor stimulation will cause decrease of insulin secretion from the beta cells. So once there is decrease in the insulin secretion from the beta cells, now you tell me a point. Do you think that the glucose will be reabsorbed into the cell? No. Because if there is no insulin, the glucose will not be reabsorbed into the cell. And that is the reason why there will be hyperglycemia. Alright, next. Now, the another important point what you should remember is, the beta 2 receptor stimulation will not only cause glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis, minor beta 2 mediated increase in glucagon secretion is also responsible for the elevation of the blood glucose. So, whenever these beta 2 receptors are stimulated, there will be also increase in the glucagon. Right, there will be also increase in the glucagon. So, this is a very very important point what you should remember here. So, remember now, let me tell you the metabolic effects. Sympathetic nervous system by acting on the adipose tissue, it will increase the free fatty acids. Now, how do you think it will increase the free fatty acids is? The beta 3 receptors which are present in the adipose tissue, whenever they are stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system, there will be breakdown of the triglycerides to the free fatty acids. Next, you take the effect of the sympathetic nervous system on the carbohydrate metabolism. When the sympathetic nervous system is acting on the carbohydrate metabolism, it will increase the blood glucose. Now, how do you think it will increase the blood glucose is? One point what you should remember, sympathetic nervous system will stimulate the beta 2 receptors and as well as alpha 2 receptors. When beta 2 receptors are stimulated, there will be glycogenolysis, that is breakdown of glycogen to glucose. When beta 2 receptors are stimulated, there will be also gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is the formation of the glucose from the non-carbohydrate moieties. That is called gluconeogenesis. And another important point is when beta 2 receptors are stimulated, there will be also increase in the glucagon levels. So in this way, beta 2 receptor stimulation will increase the blood glucose levels. The next point is the alpha 2 receptors. When alpha 2 receptors are stimulated, Right? When alpha 2 receptors are stimulated, remember there will be hyperglycemia again. Now, how does this alpha 2 receptor stimulation will cause hyperglycemia? A point what you should remember is, when alpha 2 receptors are stimulated, there is decrease in the insulin production from the beta cells and thereby the blood glucose is not reabsorbed into the cell resulting in hyperglycemia. Alright? Next. Let me tell you the effect of the sympathetic nervous system on the potassium. Sympathetic nervous system initially it will cause hyperkalemia. How? Because it will cause the efflux of the potassium from the liver. Followed by that there will be hypokalemia. How there will be hypokalemia? That is because of the uptake of potassium by the skeletal muscle there will be hypokalemia. Right? And if you take on the glands, on the salivary glands the secretions they become thick. And on the sweat glands, there will be increased sweating by stimulation of the M3 receptors by your sympathetic cholinergic system. So, this is about the actions of on the glands 
and as well as the metabolic effects.